Good morning. Welcome to WOW, Women Offering Worship. You know, for 22 years, uh, Women's Ministry has offered a Thursday morning uh, short worship, lay-led worship, and then Bible and book studies, um, starting in the chapel at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. And for 22 years, we met in the chapel. And since um, March 15th, we've been meeting online. So we are kind of um, watching to see and wondering what our 23rd year of women's ministry might look like. But for now, we have turned our half an hour or so lay-led worship into a short faith lift. And um, so we hope that uh, you find some inspiration in this today. Uh, two weeks ago, I needed to have a pre-surgical COVID test. And when the results came back, uh, I opened them up and they didn't really introduce themselves, just said I had something from my doctor. And the first thing that it said was, your value is not detected. <laughs> didn't tell me it was the COVID test, didn't tell me initially anything, just that my value was not detected. And that really stopped me in my tracks. Obviously, clearly, once I could get past that, down below it said my COVID test had been negative, therefore there was no value. But um, I've taken that and I've uh, really thought about this a lot in the last couple of weeks, that my value was not detected. Mother Teresa once said, it is not how much we are doing, but how much love, how much honesty, how much faith is put into doing it. It makes no difference what we're doing. What you are doing, I cannot do. What I am doing, you cannot do. Only sometimes we forget. And we spend more time looking at somebody else and wishing we were doing something else. There's a small book called Craving God by Lisa Turkhurst. And um, this one is called, I Want Legs Like Her. Proverbs tells us, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. If you're like me, chances are you've struggled with comparison and envy. Her stomach is flat, I've got a muffin top. Her hips are narrow, mine give new meaning to the word curvy. Her legs are long and lean, mine are like tree trunks. Suddenly all my blessings are pale in comparison. What I don't have blinds me from seeing what I do have. My heart is drawn into a place of misguided assumptions and ingratitude, as I assume everything is great for women who possess what I don't have and I become less and less thankful for what is mine. And here's the real kicker. Things for the person I'm comparing myself to are almost never what they seem. If there's one lesson that living more than 40 years has taught me, it's that everybody has not so great aspects of their lives. Whenever I get an idyllic view of someone else's life, I often say out loud, I am not equipped to handle what they have, both the good and the bad. God had, had, has had to teach me a lot about how to nip a comparison in the bud so it doesn't develop into full-blown envy and jealousy. The statement, I am not equipped to handle what they have, both the good and the bad, has been one of the greatest gifts God has ever given me. Every situation has both good and bad. When I want someone else's good, I must realize that I am asking for their bad that comes along with it. It's always a package deal. And usually if I just give something enough time to unfold, I often thank God I didn't get someone else's package. She loves the truth of Proverbs 14:20. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Sitting around wishing my legs were shapelier did nothing but discourage me and make me feel rotten. However, getting out and exercising 
made me come alive. It wasn't a quick fix, and I still can't say I have shapely dancer legs, but I have peace knowing that I am doing what I can, and it is good. Oh, so often I have wished that I had shapelier legs, um, long and lean. When my grandson drew a picture of me, um, and it was a stick person, so I was really thin. But there was my head, and there was my body, and there were my arms, and then there were my legs. And I loved that picture. I left it on my refrigerator for months and months and months, and it made me smile every time I looked at it because he saw me with the legs I've always thought that I wanted. The reality is if I had long, lean legs, all my pants would be too short. There is that. There will always be someone who can't see your worth. Don't let that be you. It's a quote from Mel Robbins. A person's most useful asset is not the head full of knowledge, but a heart full of love and an ear ready to listen and a hand willing to help. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. Each one of us, ladies, is beautiful. It's not what we see in the mirror. It is what is reflected in our eyes, what is reflected in our actions, what other people see in us. You can only do what you can do. You can't do what other people can do. You can only do you, and you do it really well. Pope Francis said, living for others is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. Those are things you can do. And I was just reconnecting. So I'm sitting out on my porch. I was going to sit underneath my beautiful Chinese, uh, Japanese maple tree, beautiful red tree. And just as I was about to go out, my wonderful neighbor came out with his um, weed whacker, which you might be able to hear in the background. So here I am on my porch where I have had three different friends come this week and do what they could do and have a porch visit. It's been delightful. Henry Drummond said in writing in the Daily Dig from June 19th, have you ever noticed how much of Christ's life was spent in merely doing kind things? He spent a great portion of his time simply making people happy, in doing good turns for people. There is only one thing greater than happiness in the world, and that is holiness, and that is not in our keeping. But what God has put in our power is the happiness of those about us, and that is largely to be secured by our being kind to them. I wonder how it is that we are not all kinder than we are, how much the world needs it, how easily it is done, how instantaneously it acts, how infallibly it is remembered. I've eaten the blueberry pie and the chicken casserole and the salad. People won't remember what you did, but they will remember how you made them feel. And I remember the laughter and the fun of just sitting out here on the porch. No salad or blueberry pie required. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Okay, more internet issues. Live your life with purpose. Focus on your blessings, not your misfortunes. Focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. Be yourself and don't wait for the approval of others. But most importantly, have a positive and humble mindset no matter what situation you are in. Count your blessings, not your problems, and you will realize how beautiful your life truly is. Recently, I came upon a book called I Am Enough. And let me read part of it to you. Like the sun I am here to shine, like the voice I am here to sing, like time I'm here to be, 
and be everything I can. Like the winner, I'm here to win, and if I don't, get up again. I know we don't look the same, our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame, but that does not dictate our worth. We both have places here on earth, and in the end, we are right here to live a life of love, not fear, to help each other when it's tough, to say together, I am enough. You are enough. I am enough. You are enough. You are a blessing to those around you. Be blessed. You have been blessed to be a blessing. <sighs> Ladies, one more thing out of the President's Devotional by Joshua Dubois. He quotes Bishop Kenneth Untiner, who says, It helps now and then. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water the seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for God's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the end results, but it is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, or messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. I love the... Um, ancient saying that says, wise is the man who plants a tree under whose shade he will never sit. I hope I'm one of those tree planters. I hope that I can live beyond myself and live for others, show that light that God has given me, not compare my tree trunk legs to those of dancer legs, not compare my talents or what I feel sometime our lack of to others because I know that God has made me in his image and he tells me again and again every day I am enough may you have a blessed day may your internet work better than mine is working this morning um, see you next week we have several different people doing the next several weeks messages I can't wait. They are going to be wonderful, inspirational um, messages. Bless your day. Amen.